UXUI design requires an extensive amount of knowledge of diverse skills, including understanding human behavior, psychology, design principles, visual design, tools, and business. This might seem daunting at first, but don't worry. In this video, I'm sharing a UX UI design study guide that I would take if I were to start everything from scratch. This guide will help you learn the essential theory and master the practical skills. I created this guide focusing on the best use of your time and money, understanding that you may be fresh out of school or that you may be transitioning from another field like I was. Of course, the learning journey doesn't end with this guide, but it will help you get started on the right foot. Okay, so let's go to Notion and get the study session started. To start things off, I want you to understand the fundamentals of user experience and also user interface design, including a couple of key principles in the design process. Take a course available through Coursera. You can take it for free and you just pay for the certification if you like. And also for you to read this book, The Design of Everyday Things, I added a note here that if you decide to take a certification along with this study guide, my recommendation is the UX design certification by Google. And I'll be mentioning which specific course you should be taking at the given time based on the study guide. This is a way for you to dive deeper, for you to have more exercise. And it's something that if you have the availability and resources for it, I really advise you to take it. Then moving forward, it's going to be important for you to go ahead and understand the field. So this is going to be the time for you to read about the role of design, about why UX UI design matters, and also some important aspects about the industry. I included a video of mine where I share 15 resources for product designers that you can find helpful, and also two videos with my take on the reality of being a UX UI designer. Note that as I mentioned, you can be reading these articles while you're reading the book that I mentioned here and taking the course. You don't have to wait to finish all of this for you to move to the next step. The third one is for you to go ahead and start understanding the different roles that we can have. So the different type of designers, what's the difference between UX and UI. In here, I list some articles and videos that are helpful for you. At this point, I really want to make sure that if you want to continue with this study guide, that you are sure that this is a career that you want to pursue. So once you're done, make a list of your favorite roles, the ones that you see yourself in the future, and then you can do one of the following. Go on LinkedIn and start messaging five to 10 people that are currently in the roles that you wish for and try to book a call with them. An alternative for that is for you to go on ADP list, which is a mentoring platform focused on designers. Next up, it will be time for you to start learning about design thinking. So I listed three articles that I find that are going to be very helpful for you. And also this video here on YouTube for you to have a look. If you also want to dive deeper, uh, the Interaction Design Foundation, which was actually created by Don Norman, the author of that first book I recommended, has a course specifically about design thinking. Then an important aspect of UX UI design is user research. So in here, you're going to read some articles on user research on how to do it. Then we're going to start getting a little bit more practical. So you're going to start studying about design principles. For that, there is a book and also another course by the Interaction Design Foundation here that you can take a look. At that time, if your bedside table is looking a little empty and you're looking for something new to read, my recommendation is this book called Laws of UX, Using Psychology to Design Better Products and Services. Then moving on, we're going to start talking about an important stage when you're designing a product from scratch. So that is to wireframe and to work on the low fidelity prototype. If you don't know what that is, uh, I recommend that you watch this video that I made last year. Now it's going to be the time for you to go ahead and start working with Figma. I'm recommending Figma because it's the goal to design tool these days. I feel that whenever you're getting started, it can be quite daunting for you to learn how to get around. But the goal in this section is really for you to go ahead and start breaking this barrier. A side note, if you're a student or a teacher, you can get access to the pro plan for free. I've linked a page on Figma's website where they share the details. And I included here two crash courses available on YouTube where they walk you through the products, the features, and etc. Another thing that I love is following Figma's YouTube channel. They share a lot of tutorials there, so that's quite helpful. Now that you're getting a little bit more familiar with Figma, you're going to have an activity. You're going to design a product, but not a product from scratch. You're going to start replicating 
a famous app or website that you use and love. The goal here is for you to try to replicate interfaces in Figma as closely as possible. It's a very good exercise when you get started because you're able to analyze the font sizes that are being used, padding, contrast, and other elements of visual design. So based on the app that you choose, you may have different interfaces for you to replicate, but I listed some very nice ones for you to get started. So sign up page, login, forgot password, password, home screen, search experience, user profile, and etc. And then a couple of tips. So the first one is use this website called Mobbin for you to be able to find the high fidelity interfaces of the apps. Uh, if you have a hard time finding their fonts, uh, you can try to use a font identifier. If the font is not available, a suggestion is for you to go on the Google Fonts website and for you to try to find one that is similar. A very important aspect of this exercise is for you to identify the design elements that are being used across the interface and for you to go to YouTube and try to learn how to do those things. So let's say one of the apps that you're using has a gradient. So you go on YouTube and then you look for how to make the gradient effect in Figma. Moving on, it's going to be time for you to prototype. So that is make an interactive model of the designs that you're doing. I have a specific video on what prototype is, the importance, and how to do it. And I also linked this full tutorial so you can see all the nuances and details about prototyping. Once you're done with the video, go back to the 10-day design replication exercise that you did and start connecting those screens so that you can have a functional model of those designs. Now we're going to get really specific on some key elements of UI design, visual design. The first topic we're going to cover are colors. So this stage is made out of three activities. The first one is a video that I created about how to create a color system. Once done, you're going to read the documentation of two very important color systems in our industry, Spectrum, which was created by Adobe, and then also Material Design by Google. And then once you've finished, you go ahead and design and create a color system for a fictional product. Moving on, now we're going to talk about type. So we're going to follow the exact same structure. I do have a video in the topic where I covered the typography fundamentals, and then you're going to dive deeper into the documentation for the type system for both spectrum and material design. Once you're done with that, the third part is going to be the exact same thing, but now you're going to be setting up a time system in Figma. So define the font style, sizes, weights, and spacing for a functional product. If you need guidance, again, I linked a tutorial there. Moving on, you're going to be learning how to design for different themes. I linked two of my videos here about the topic, and then I want you to return to the interfaces that you designed during the 10-day design replication challenge. This is going to be the time for you to analyze the dark mode interface that you've designed before, in case you did, and, and make any necessary improvements based on a knowledge that you just acquired. Then if you wanna go the extra mile, my recommendation is for you to go ahead and design the remaining interfaces in their opposite theme. A suggestion that I have here is for you to go on YouTube and try to look for Figma tutorials on how to set up different things using variables. You don't have to do everything from scratch since Figma launched variables. You can actually set up two different themes and with a click of a button, you go from one to the other, which is a very nice thing to do. Moving on, it's going to be time for you to learn more about accessibility. This should be a top priority when you're designing any product or interface. When you design with accessibility in mind, that's going to affect your choices around color contrast, typography, font sizes, how you place the elements, and so many other things. In this section of the study guide, I'm bringing the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, which is such an important resource for you to learn more about the best practices you should follow. So start by reviewing their documentation, seeing what are the core principles and guidelines. And then I also linked here two talks from Config, which is Figma's conference, talking specifically about accessibility. Lastly, I want you to head over Figma and for you to start applying what you've just learned. So there are two plugins, one called Stark and another one called Contrast. Both were designed thinking of accessibility and making sure that you're meeting the accessibility criteria. Next up, 
This is going to be a big project. I estimated 30 days, but feel free to take longer for that. This is going to be the moment for you to design a product from scratch. You've replicated an existing product. You've gathered relevant knowledge about the theory and also your mastering Figma. So this is going to be the time for you to design a product from start to finish. No matter if you're going with a fictional project that is not going to be built or with one that it is, I recommend that you keep the product idea as simple as possible so you can really be mindful about the visual aspect, about each one of the features without feeling overwhelmed. I've listed five product ideas that are pretty straightforward, but at the same time, you can really innovate on some of the aspects of these apps. And also make sure to share this process online on Dribble, X, LinkedIn, no matter the platform, choose the one that works best for you and that you feel more comfortable with, but let people know about what you're doing. All right, now it's going to be time for you to start working on your application documents. I'm not a career coach, so I'm not going to give you specific tips on this. However, there is Rosie from Badass Careers that I've been following her for ages. I really like her content. I see she really focuses on how to build your professional personal brand and also how to leverage that for you to stand out. She has some free workshops on cover letters and resumes. So my recommendation for you is that you watch them. Also have a look at her YouTube channel. And lastly, it's time for you to build your portfolio. So just go ahead and watch these three videos where I share the structure of a good portfolio, how to build one without no prior experience, and also the structure of a good case study. I've also linked some portfolios for inspiration that you can have a look. And finally, just start building your own portfolio. I've also included two podcast episodes that I listened to when I was creating my own portfolio and that really helped me out. And lastly, these are some important UX, UI design topics that I would advise you to look into. So go through all the links and also be free to find other resources online. And there you go. I hope you take this guide and start studying. And as I mentioned before, it's a journey. As long as you keep showing up every day and getting better, I'm sure you'll be fine. And before you go, I think you'll find helpful five aspects of this career that I wish I had learned about sooner. Click this video right here and I'll see you there. Happy designing!